Congresswoman Marsha Fudge of, of Ohio joins us, and you're also, of course, head of the Congressional Black Caucus. So, Congresswoman, these numbers on the Affordable Care Act, pretty stunning if you look at the RAND Corporation numbers, because if all totals are accurate, it would mean more than 20 million people getting health care. Yeah. How is this not the Democrats' calling card and, and success story going into the, the midterm elections? Oh, it absolutely is our calling card. There's no question about it. I think that when people sit back and realize that the Affordable Care Act really did what it was supposed to do, uh, and, and I listened to the clip, there is no way that if, in fact, the Affordable Care Act had driven up cost, that it would be that quiet. They would never give the president that kind of a break. We know for a fact that the Affordable Care Act has really reduced the increase in health care. So it is doing what it's supposed to do, and I will continue to talk about it everywhere I go, every single day I'm on the campaign trail. Well, you know, there's obviously another very important Democratic politician who's been giving the same advice that you're giving now to Democrats, which is former President Bill Clinton, who over the weekend told Democrats, listen, you need to run on this. You need to embrace the Affordable Care Act. You need to actually run on its positives. Is that something that you're starting to see happen within the Democratic caucus? No, no question about it. Now, people like me, we've been talking about it since the day it passed. I've never backed away from it because I thought it was the right thing to do. I knew that there were 30 million people who needed health care. I represent places where my children couldn't get health care, where I have the best health care facilities in the world. So I've been running on it from the very beginning. I mean, in your home state of Ohio, obviously, there was controversy over whether to expand Medicaid. Right. Ultimately, Governor Kasich did go ahead and do the expansion. But I want to show you, uh, there's a couple of maps I want to take you to take a look at. And the places where health for, uh, healthcare affordability is worst, let's start looking at that. Uh, the states where it is the worst, where people do not have the money to afford to buy health care, states like Alabama, West Virginia, Mississippi, North Carolina, Arkansas, Oklahoma, South Carolina, you get in the trend, oh, yeah. Florida, Texas, Arizona, mostly states governed by Republicans sure. where the unaffordability is highest. So now I want you to take a look at where actually health care is most affordable. States like Iowa, Minnesota, Hawaii, North Dakota, Massachusetts, which already, already had a version of the ACA, South Dakota, Wisconsin, Connecticut, Maryland, Alaska. Are we literally starting to have a two America situation where you have these blue states where they're tackling affordability, embracing the exchanges, and expanding Medicaid, and then largely red states where, let's just keep it real, a lot of African Americans are missing out on getting the ACA because their governors won't expand Medicaid. There is no doubt in my mind that we have two Americas for many reasons, but in particular for the health of our people. The people who live in states where their governors refused to take the Medicaid expansion should do everything in their power to get rid of them because these people really have done a disservice to everyone they represent. When you refuse to take federal dollars that pay for three years for this expansion, you to me have said to your state, I don't care about you. I don't care what happens to you. I just want to stop the president from having a successful uh, proposal and to have a, a successful plan because otherwise, who doesn't take the money? Come on, Joy. Who would not take billions of dollars to help poor people in their state? Well, do so you think that it's, it, that it's been a mistake on the part of Democrats not to emphasize the Medicaid portion? You have a lot of ink and a lot of push around the private insurance piece, getting that $7 million. But you haven't really heard so much touting of the Medicaid part, which is a big part of the expansion. Listen, let me just tell you a story. Young man in my district, a uh, healthy young man, uh, he tried to get on the website early, couldn't get on because of all of the issues. Some weeks later, he found out he had to have his gallbladder removed. So he goes through the surgery. He's $40,000 now in debt, trying to figure out how to get out of it. Well, he finds out that now, as he goes back, he qualifies for Medicaid. So we retroactively put him in the Medicaid expansion program. Now he is covered, he is healthy, and he understands the significance of health care for a young person. I mean, those are the kind of stories that you would think would be really out front for Democrats. Uh, you know, let, let's quickly talk about some of the polling, because what, what strategists are saying is that Democrats are in trouble in the midterms because of the Affordable Care Act, despite those stunning numbers from Rand that show maybe 20 million people potentially getting health care. Right now, um, in terms of what people want done, among Republicans, 26 percent of Republicans in the latest Kaiser Family Foundation survey say keep but fix the health care law. 27 percent say repeal and replace. 31 percent repeal and don't don't replace. Where do you think that piece comes from, the 31 percent? Are these people who just have health care and so aren't concerned about expansion? No, I think it's people who are listening to a narrative that is put out by Fox and these other people that really believe what they hear every time they turn those television stations. Any 
right-minded person, any person that cares about his fellow man, is going to want to be sure that their neighbors and their family and their friends have health care. So I would say that those are people who really don't understand what it is. Secondly, those are people who don't want it to succeed for some reason other than uh, that it is a good, it's a good plan. I think that we are just at a point, Joy, in this country where there are always going to be those who will be against anything the president is for. Uh, and we'll try to destroy anything that is going to help people who are not like them. All right, and we're out of time, but is this going to be a big part of the CBC agenda going no forward? No question about it. All we're, right. we're all in. Congressman Marsha Fudge, head of the Congressional Black Caucus, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you for having me. All right, and coming